Howdy folks, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be discussing getting your drone pilot license. Yes, ACFC and GVC. I recently did this. Did I pass? Did I fail? Well, you'll have to watch the video to find out. But in this video, I'm going to run through exactly what's involved in the course, what you'll get out of the course, if you need the course, how much experience you need to do the course, and finally, my experience. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm gonna give you some hints and tips on how to pass it with flying colors. So I've been flying my Phantom 4 RTK for the last two and a half years, and I didn't have my license. There's a few reasons behind this, but I've been flying securely, safely, and legally don't worry about that, in the open category. But it was about time that I got my license. Why? Well, commercial work these days just really isn't viable without a license. And honestly, on reflection, after doing the course, I now understand just really how important it is to have both your ACFC and your GVC if you want to fly your drone commercially in the UK. Now, do you need a license? Well, that's something you're gonna to have to decide. You'll need to look at the categories. We're not gonna go into that in this video and see whether it is something that you do in need. If you're a hobbyist with a lightweight aircraft, then probably not, but if you are tempted to do any kind of commercial work, I heavily recommend that you do. You may just want to start off with the ACFC, which is great for smaller drones. But to be honest with you, I took the course at Drone Pilot Academy and those guys were amazing. I took the GBC course, which I know was going to cover me for all commercial works. And the great thing about the Drone Pilot Academy course is if you take the GVC, you're also going to get included the ACFC. So it's perfect. First question I get is, do you need experience? Do you need experience flying a drone or do you even need a drone to take the course? No, that's the most amazing thing about this course. For the course that I did at Drone Pilot Academy, they have all the drones and you never have to have flown a drone before. Why? Well, because you get hands-on experience on the course. Yes, they will actually teach you how to properly fly the drone. Now, this was great for me because even though I've been flying, I realized I've picked up quite a few bad habits. But the main thing to learn here is you shouldn't be worried if you don't have a drone or you have very little experience. That is not going to be a problem, especially if you do the course with Drone Pilot Academy. I should probably say here, this video is not sponsored by Drone Pilot Pilot Academy, but they did put me on the course free of charge. And this is because I had quite a few bad experiences of signing up for courses that were to be done remotely and then do the test online. And it just didn't work out for me. And I'll explain why at the end of this video. So now you know you don't really need experience. Let's move on to the next thing. The all important thing is the cost. The cost of the course can vary. I will only relate this to Drone Pilot Academy. You're looking at around about £900 to do the course if you want to turn up on the day for three days. If you want to be residential, which means you go and stay in a hotel, they'll sort everything out for you. This is a little bit over a thousand pounds. And the great thing about this is your pilot instructor will actually be in the hotel as well. So I know lots of the other candidates on the course would be going back to the hotel and learning lots of things from the guy and asking questions in the evening. I didn't do that because I live quite close to a test center, so I just went on the day. But I would say for that extra cost, it's highly worth it if you have the time. Okay, so what is actually involved on the course? I should say that I hate exams, but this was a real enjoyable experience for me. There's a mix of both theory and practical. Like I said, you're gonna get lots of hands-on experience flying the drone. So you're gonna need a minimum of three hours flying the drone, which you will probably rack up whilst doing the course. If you don't, for example, if there's really poor weather conditions, conditions, Drone Pilot Academy will get you back in at some point to make sure you clock your hours so you don't have to worry about this. For the ACFC, there is a theory test. Now that theory test, you have to pass a 75% pass mark. Don't worry, if I did it, you can do it too. The GBC is the same, there's a theory test, and then you'll do your flight assessment. So your flight assessment is out with the instructor and he will give you instructions on what to do and you just have to complete some set tasks in order to pass. Again, this is something you really don't need to worry about. I was nervous, but I passed. The kind of things that you're gonna do on the practical are bringing the drone down at a controlled speed in case something happens in the sky, learning to do a figure of eight, and then learning how to fly your drone in ATI mode. So what is ATI mode? ATI mode is when you have complete full control of your drone. So that means it's gonna be affected by wind. Now, this is really hard for me because when I'm out flying for surveys, I have a set route and the, the drone pretty much flies itself. So flicking it into ATI mode was great for me because I was able to practice against the wind and then in full control of the drone. And that really opened my eyes into just how much you need to practice this mode outside of your normal flying. So if anything happens to that drone, you can safely bring it back in. Really important. The one thing that I was really impressed about with this course is kind of all the course materials that comes with it which can be a little bit daunting at the start. So this is kind of the pack that you get when you arrive at Drone Pilot Academy. It's all laid out nicely with some maps and some pens and a cool little notebook on the table. And initially I thought, wow, that is a lot to learn in three days. 
But to be honest with you, this is kind of like your go-to. You're going to be taking this home. This is going to be helping you fly in the future. And what happens is you'll discuss everything that's within this book on the course. But when it comes to the test, the instructors, I should say shout out to Chris because he was amazing on this course, are really good at kind of honing you in on what's going to come up on the test. They're not going to give you the answers and it is a multiple choice test. So you need to remember that you're not going to be left out in the cold having to think of all these crazy answers. Most of the information is in here. Like I said, you can go away and study it on the evening. I did like a few bits, few hours of revision throughout the course. But to be honest with you, if you just listen to the instructor, you will pass this course. The one thing about this course, my instructor Chris was an ex-RAF guy. I was really impressed with the knowledge of the guys that were on the course and also the instructor. I threw so many questions at him and there was nothing that phased him. Yes, I was that annoying person in the classroom with the hand up the whole time. But that was really important to me because there are lots of courses out there that will get you through to get your license online. Like I said, you can study and do an online test and then go do like a one day assessment. I didn't want to do that because if you're anything like me and you've got such a hectic, busy work life, doing a test online, you just find every excuse not to do the test, which is exactly what happened. I signed up for both a GBC and an ABC over two years ago and I never took the test because there was always an excuse. I was always incredibly busy. And to be honest with you, I don't think I would have passed. However, going and being on a residential course, there's no way to escape. And also you get to ask a ton of questions. I honestly think I learned so much in these three days that I have not learned in the past two and a half years of flying experience wise. So it is well worth it. Okay, now my experience with the course. There were a couple of things that I kind of struggled with, to be honest with you. I did a geography degree and the map reading section of this course was quite hard. There's one part of the exam where you have to read a airspace map. And yeah, I found it a little bit tricky, but Chris was great. He taught me through it and I managed to pinpoint everything that I needed to for the course. The other area of the course I found a little bit tricky was, again, something I should have known about, which is like reading weather and knowing you know, how weather can affect your drone. I've flown in kind of some tricky situations when it comes to weather, and I now know what to look out for with both my drone and the controller to know whether I'm flying safely or not. And that's ultimately what these guys want you to do, is they want you to pass the test, but they also want you to fly safely, because if you're flying safely, everyone's happy. Drones can be incredibly dangerous and sometimes it's really easy to forget that. You have effectively a killing machine in the sky. If that comes down, it's really going to hurt someone. So these guys are passionate about drones. They sell drones, they do the course. They are a lot of them, ex-RAF. Um, so I, there's probably a few pilots in there. And their wealth of knowledge is huge, but also the passion that they have for flying drones really shines through. Now for the AFCFC course, I did pass. I don't know what percentage that I got, but I passed it. And after taking that written course, I then went on and did the GVC course and then the flight exam as well, which was the practical out in the field. My experience, the GVC was slightly harder, which I guess is the point of it because you're able to do things that you're not able to do with the ACFC. And part and parcel of the GVC is having an operator's manual. Now, the great thing about Drone Pilot Academy is that they have this manual kind of set up for you, kind of a blueprint which they give you and then you can adjust and basically they'll help you with your submission to the CAA to get your approval. So it's not just you take the test and then you're off, you need to go and produce this information, risk assessment, method statements. And for me, commercially, this was a massive plus because I don't have time to sit down and kind of write this manual. Plus they know the industry, they know drones. So their blueprint is absolutely spot on. So like I say, this for me was an absolute game changer. And the one thing that I've learned since finishing the course is Drone Pilot Academy want you to succeed in every area of flying a drone. So they're always on hand. If you do the course with them, you know, you can get a drone from them, you can rent from them, you can call them up at any point maybe not 24 seven, but they will fully support you in anything drone related. And I love that. I've always been attracted to businesses that don't just sell you something and then leave you. Drone Pilot Academy are definitely not those type of guys. They're incredible. And if you want to take the course with those guys, you really won't regret it. It is worth mentioning that they do the residential course. They will also come into a business. So if you've got several team members who you would like to be assessed and to get approval and licenses, they will come to you. They have courses all over the country. I'm going to put a link down in the description um, to their website and it will give you a list of all the courses and the costs. I think at the moment the website is due to be changed, but their GVC course doesn't actually say that you get the ACFC as well. 
but you do. Um, and I think it is huge value for money. There'll also be a cheeky discount code below. Um, so if you mention my name to those guys, you're gonna get a discount off the course. Like I said, check them out, they're all over the country. I cannot recommend them enough. Okay, so finally, where does that take me now that I've got my license? Well, I can breathe. Yes, I can breathe knowing that I am certified, that my clients are gonna be happy, and that I know how to fly safely. I know this sounds crazy, but you can really get into um, a comfort zone when flying because, especially if you're flying on an automated mission, I was doing this too often. I realize now the importance of practicing coming out of that and flying the drone. And it's also given me some more confidence flying other drones. I had a chance to fly the Mavic, which um, is incredible, so much smoother than the Phantom 4. And also I now have this pack and the paperwork that I can revert back to if I have any questions from either clients or just within myself about the drone capabilities and where I can fly. Like I say, Drone Pilot Academy, those guys are keeping all their customers aware of any changes because there are changes quite consistently with the CAA and rules and regulations in the UK. I think just recently in January, there's a new rule that you can't fly within 500 meters of a prison. Yeah, so if you think about doing that, you can. Which is really important for me is when you've got so many things going on in the commercial world, if there's important information that you get that and it's filtered through because it ultimately affects your job. All right, so that's it for this video. Hopefully you've got a good insight into the GVC, the AVC, and my experience with Drone Pilot Academy. And finally, I did say I was gonna give you some tips and hints on how to pass. Well, number one is listen, obviously. I know this is hard sometimes in the classroom experience, but these guys do a really good job of breaking up what you need to know into small bite-sized sections. That's awesome. They do plenty of breaks. You get a good lunch break and then it's the day's broken up with you going out and doing some practical flying. Do a little bit of revision before the exam. So on the second night, this is something I didn't have a chance to do because one of my kids was ill, but it would have helped massively. So maybe spend an hour to two hours reading through the book and concentrating on what you need to do. Be prepared actually for the mock exam. So they do a mock exam to kind of give you um, a good idea of what's going to be coming up on the final test. This is ace because then you know kind of what multiple choice questions are going to be, how they're going to be worded. So yeah, prepare a little bit for the mock. And then finally to pass the practical test. Calm your nerves, have a little word with yourself before you fly because sometimes I get like the flight jitters. But if you calm your nerves, the guys, like I say, are incredible. They don't want you to fail but they also want you to fly safely. So they will really help you through this practice. And what I will say is if you've got questions whilst you're flying, ask, because that's the opportunity for them to give you kind of hands-on technical knowledge and show you anything that you want to know. Okay, that's it for today's video. Please let me know if you have any questions about the course, how to pass a course, or anything you want to know. Like I say, please go and check out Drone Pilot Academy. Those guys are awesome. And I'm off to fly safely.